Thank you for tuning in to Music Marvels with the Chick with Beats and Breezy Gibson. I am music producer Chick with Beats. And I am entrepreneur Breezy Gibson. And we're glad that you're rocking with us today. We got another dope show lined up for you. Matter of fact, you want to tell them who's coming in? Oh, man, the, the one, the only, Hunter Six Letters. I mean, he's busting it up. He's been busting it up, but he's really busting it up now. So looking forward to him coming into the, as you say, the, uh, what, how, what's that phrase you use? <laughs> In the virtual building, yeah. <laughs> there you go, there you go, there you go. Okay, looking forward to him coming in the virtual building and joining us. And so we're going to have a really good time because he's got some big news to share with all of the listeners as well as us too. Awesome. I'm excited. Can't wait for it. And uh, of course, we got music industry news for you and a little bit of beats by yours truly sprinkled throughout. Okay, let's do it. All right, let's go.
right, one more time, one more time. We are right here. Got all kinds of great things happening, but in the greatest of great things happening, our guest today is a man of many means. He's been doing a whole lot of great things, and lately he's really been doing a lot of great things. His plate stays full, but we're just happy that he's able to come in and share with you, the listeners, one more time. So without any further ado, and like I say, his plate is full, so we're going to get him in as quickly as possible. The one, the only, Hunter Six Letters. Hunter, are What's you there, What's going sir? on? <laughs> <laughs> That's him. That's him right there. The one and only Hunter hey, Six Letters. For real, because y'all guys, man, y'all are really helping artists. Um, I can say this while we live. Breezy helped me at the beginning. He gave me a shot. Um, I remember it way back in 2016. I came out with Mucho Caliente, and he hit me up. He said, "Young man, you you got something special. I want I want to put you on my show." And I said, "Hey, man, you the first person to ask me to do an interview." I said, "You know, I'm a I'm gonna have to make that happen." We made it happen, man. I got so much love just from being on y'all show, man. And um, hey, I appreciate y'all, man. I want to give y'all flowers while I, you know, while y'all here. And, while I'm here, I want to give y'all 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 flowers because it's just like you know a lot of people don't get their uh, you know their recognition like they're supposed to, man. And you know y'all are good people, so you know I just want the world to know how beautiful and how great you guys are and uh, the opportunities y'all uh, you know help people get you know just by using y'all platform, man. So I just want to give y'all a big huge thank you. Awesome, wow. we appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to say, man. I don't know what to say. That's Whoa, you know, I mean, thank you, man. Thank you. That's a blessing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For real. <laughs> That's a blessing. Okay, so now we know about 106 letters, but so now we've got some new folks that are, are zoning in with us these days. So can you like quickly tell them, share, educate yeah. them about who 106 letters is and what 106 letters is all about? Yeah, uh, 106 letters, he's an interesting person right now uh <laughs> you know i got the music thing going on um you know i'm working in my communities uh trying to make the community better like i said when we first had the first interview i was just starting doing that and um i've been trying to feed the homeless on sundays uh we about to get back into that real heavy i just came out with a mixtape called six protons two it got a hundred thousand streams in two weeks of its release so that was major for us as independents uh, we're getting a lot of things going off of that um also we have uh what else i got going on i got pastries i got wrap cookies i got wrap honey buns uh blueberry honey buns at that so i don't think nobody ever had a blueberry honey bun before so we're just doing things that uh other people don't do you know i'm trying to put my hands in different things to where I can create another, uh, create avenues for my kids, my family members, uh, people around me that uh, want to see me successful, that I can just give them lanes to work and take over and, and, and be able to be very successful in this life that we got going on right now. This is a lot of things going on in this world to where we can make money now. You got cryptocurrency going on. I'm tapping into that, the NFTs. Um, you know, I'm just basically somebody that's standing on morals uh, that I don't see anymore in the world that we used to have. I'm, I'm a 90s baby. Um, so, you know, I was raised on, you know, working hard and uh, believing in yourself and really putting in the work. And now we in a generation where everything is just technology and, you know, you can make millions of dollars just sitting at your house on the phone. But I'm just still trying to uh, preach in my music how to love thy neighbor, love your uh, love yourself, you know, love your community. You know, uh, watch the food you eat, watch the, you know, the certain medicines you put in your body. I try to teach people about sea moss, elderberry, all these type of things, holistic health, um, you know, uh, life insurance, things that our people are not really woke to. That's what I try to do as 106 Letters. I try to show people, hey, be happy in the scheme you win, and this is what you need to move forward because uh, a lot of us, we, we are in a position because we are not educated on this world. And if we was more educated, we can move better than what we are, you know, living in the current situation we're living in. Um, I, I went to a seminar, uh, I went to a college seminar at Winston-Salem State University and I watched somebody speak. And he said, um, you know, the thing about our people is we're not, 
we're not uh what how did he say we're not just ill-mannered we're we're miseducated mm-hmm. you know we we have bought into the things uh as a people into the wrong things like materials and stuff like that but we forgot the way of the land the way of the people how to love and how to uh move with good intentions and stuff like that so um i'm just trying to bring that vibe back you know the one thing i tell my kids all the time my two sons i'm so happy that i got to live in the 90s and the reason i say that is because you you've seen i remember back in the day i can walk into my neighbor's house sit on the couch watch tv and it wasn't a problem you know as a little kid you can't do that now. Kids can't do that now. You, you, a kid walks to somebody's front door, they're getting shot. And then they're on the news and then they're dead. You feel what I'm saying? So we're in different times. And the times we're in is so hateful and so lost. I feel like I just want to bring that love vibe back, you know, that frequency back mm-hmm. to where we're like, okay, we need to get on our on our business and we need to love ourselves and really build our communities up and, and build each other up because all we got is each other. You know, you know, a lot of people say, hey, you know, I make it on my own team, no sleep, this, this, that, and the third <laughs> program, okay? The mind needs sleep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you need people. Because <laughs> if you look at other people out here, the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, they run in packs. Mm. Alliances, family alliances. We're the only people that don't have alliances. We, we fight against each other. We kill against each other. We push each other down. We make fun of each other. You know, I try to tell people all the time, you know, if, if if I see somebody hurting or see somebody down, before I give an opinion, I'm gonna try to give them a solution. Mm. Mm. Feel what I'm saying? Mm. Before I look at that person and I say, oh, that person is down and, oh, he got on bummy clothes, he rocking felines, or he rocking like, if I got that much energy to say that about that person, why can I not have that same energy to find a solution to make him look better mm. or him or he look better? We have to go about things different because the way we are going about things in life is from a culture that is not our culture. Mm -hmm. The people who are running the world are not of us. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, perfect. They're from from a different type of living. They're from a, they don't, like they said, we, uh, you know, I'm not going to get religious or whatever, you know, uh, but I'm not, but it's like, like the Bible says, we come from dirt and you know we are we're here you know what i'm saying we are we are god's chosen people we are in harmony with the world with the universe that's why my tapes my mixtapes are called six protons six neutrons and six electrons Mm -hmm. that is the day of a melanated person's makeup this is this this is six protons six neutrons six electrons Mm -hmm. also the universe has six protons six neutrons six electrons that should be the first thing a melanated person should learn in school. Do they teach you that? No. So they have us living like them, killing like them, but they don't get the same repercussions and consequences because they're not in harmony with the world like we are. Mm. See what well, I'm you saying? Know what? You know what? You know, in all of the interviews that we've done, and a chick with beats can can she can verify this. Nobody, not one, has busted through the door, coming in, educating people like that, uh, uh, making specific references to points that can make a person's mind better, their health better. There's, mm-hmm. I mean, a chick would be. I mean, hey, I got to yeah. turn the floor. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, yeah, you just came in, dropping gems and everything, and um, you know, it's it's really important. Uh, that you have that that not really the loss element but the unspoken element of hip-hop which is knowledge so you know with you having that and with you pouring that into your music it's it's really a beautiful thing because i miss the time frame when you know you had more to choose from as far as listening to music everybody wasn't always pushing the same stuff so you know it's really refreshing to uh, see you bringing that back and giving people some variety Yes, thank you. And and, and it's, it's it's just like um, the more and more successful I get, and the more I rub shoulders with certain people, I'm starting to see how this uh, American thing works. Um, and I would like to say this on the interview to all melanated women, black women out there: I apologize. Um, I apologize for the scrutiny and 
and the dormant that y'all had to go through as gods. Mm. The woman, the black woman is God. And um, we have as males, as black kings, um, and as other races and as other women too, because you know, women, they give life. So the woman has been the most downgraded thing on this planet or human or whatever you want to say. And the, where I'm going at with this is, I just wanted to apologize to the whole women, all the women out there. Um, I just want to say sorry for, for uh, us guys going around saying we're kings, but we're really not stepping up as kings and making it so. Because if you mm. see, um, if you see men still run the world, uh, women is still fighting for for rights and this, that, and the third. We can go back and say slavery, this, this, that, and the third with the black people, but look who's been more dormant than even slavery. The woman, raped, judged, beat, you know, you know, I, you know, I used to just think, oh, well, you know, black people and the Jews, they went through it and Holocaust and slavery. But when you really start reading books and you seen how they took y'all from pharaohs to you just a wife and a companion and a baby maker and a bad bitch and a thought and a and this, this, that, and the third, it's heartbreaking. It's like, mm -hmm. whoa. Mm -hmm. It don't matter how much success. I get I failed because I've came from a womb and I haven't spoke up to the world about the wounds around the world and their their real true meaning to the world. Mm. Wow. wow. Those are I definitely had somebody break it down to me that I looked up to, you know, that I looked up to. He was a pastor. And he said, he said, come here, let me let me talk to you, son. He said, Who, who is God to you? I said, Oh, it's Jesus. You know, he's he's up there. He's our, our Lord and Savior, our Father. He said, no, sir. God is woman. We made God, man. He said, who, if you look in a dictionary right now, what does that say? He said, the definition of God is a life giver. He said, can a woman have a baby without a man? I said, yes, sir, she can. He said, can a man have a baby without a woman? I said, no. He said, then who's God? <laughs> we have been dormant in God our whole life. Mm. We've been degrading women our whole life, but and, I, and I'm not I'm not a saint. I'm gonna sit here and keep it real. You know, I got music, trap music that say bitch, this, that, and the third. So it's like now that I'm getting to that level of panel gland being open, I have a third eye, and I get to talk to my peers like you, Breezy, like people that gave me a chance. You know, I don't want to let y'all down. And if I got the opportunity to tell the world what's really going on, because there's a lot of people in position that's famous that could tell the world what's going on, but they don't because they're happy and they're compliant with their success and the money that they get. So they like, ah, I'm just keep that over there and I'm take care of my family. <laughs> I'm let the world have to defend for themselves. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We have yeah. to be in those type of people. We have to start yeah. when we get knowledge or we get sacred knowledge, we have to start telling people what's going on because they pick us off. People like me that got knowledge and this, that, and the third, look what happened to Nipsey. Look what happened to all these people who speak up and say, oh, well, you know, we don't need medicine to cure HIV and, and this, this, that, and the third of blindness or or STDs. We can go holistic. Dr. Sebi, he get See, we have to start communicating more. You know what I'm saying? Like, I tell all the guys that's around me, they like, oh, man, that bad bitch right there. Whoa, 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 whoa. Are you going to go to your mama and call her a bitch? Oh, no, nah, that's my mama, man. You know, I love my mama. But well, that's how we have to start loving our women. Mm -hmm. Don't call her a bitch in this, that, and the third, but then you won't go call your mama that. Mm -hmm. Right. Don't tell that female you'll slap the shit out of her if you won't go slap your mama. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Like, you, 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 you be, we're being hypocrites and it is not getting nowhere. It's, it's the same thing with, with, with Black Lives Matter. They, they said with Black Lives Matter and all, all lives matter. We're still missing the main point. Until we get in there as sin as governors and we running and calling our own shots, we're going to keep going through the bullshit. I hear you. I hear you. It's going to keep being racism. And we want to go all around the racism. We want to go all around the problems instead of just hitting the source and saying, let's attack this and stop this. Mm. We can read books that say a family's been running America for 17 centuries, but ain't nobody saying nothing to stop it. Mm. We're paying insurance 
on things. You're probably paying insurance on your car. You're paying insurance on your house. But America's already bought. When you buy something, what happens? You put insurance on it. So that means everything is paid for. Mm -hmm. We're in a monopoly game. Mm -hmm. And once you start getting success and money, you start saying, oh, shit, this, I've been lied to. I've been paying taxes for no reason. I've been paying insurance for no reason. Why does why does why does my social security number have red numbers on the back of it? And when I go to the Federal Reserve account and I type that in in the search box, my bank account pops up and I have trillions of dollars in it. Why are you not telling me that? Mm-hmm. That's deep. Mm-hmm. Why are you not telling black people that African Americans in the so-called label black has no value in, in the court of law? It's in a manipulation proclamation that uh, that uh, uh, Abraham Lincoln wrote. We have the same value as the alligator. That's why they fed our babies to the alligators in Florida, the University of Florida Gators. That was the area that they fed little they fed little black babies to the gators. Mm. I stopped watching football for that. I don't even watch sports no more. It gets so deep. The stuff that we praise. I used to be a big time Florida Gator fan until I figure out what the heck that shit stood for. Mm. See what I'm Where saying? each other up. have to <laughs> words of wisdom from 106 letters now um as we progress i mean you're schooling me you're schooling a lot of folks our listeners our watchers um and you know you're going through a process of reaching levels that you hadn't had the opportunity to reach before and now one thing that you said that you read a lot of books okay a lot of our folks well a lot of people period don't read okay and you know it's been said that you know a lot of big secrets or just plain education and information we know is in those pages and you can put a book in somebody's hand (laughs) and a lot of times they'll sit that book down and they won't touch it and you know a week or two or three a month you know three four five months can go by matter of fact Sometimes a person will put maybe a fifty dollar bill in that book, and then mm-hmm. wait about a month or two, and then hey, what you think of that book? Oh well, that book. But see, <laughs> the fifty dollars was never even <laughs> exactly you know, because the exactly. person didn't crack the book. So exactly. you know, it, it, like I said, the, the times has changed. We don't read. You know, I even I even heard a saying from one of my white friends: "You want to hide it from a black person, put it in the book." Mm-hmm. Well. And once I heard that, I said, "Oh shit, they 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 up on us." When when they when you really hear people say they got four hundred years up on us, they do. We was the only the only race of people that they did not let read, and then when they did let us read, they gave us the Bible. So once you start learning and you start getting older and you start putting two together, you gotta start questioning stuff like, "Wait a minute, you you didn't let me read or write, but you gave me this." Hey, good point. Good point. Now you know what I'm saying, like what. Okay, as I as I look at the clock, so the clock is starting to 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 to, to put us in a crunch with this interview, and so the words that you're sharing, the way that you're educating, is some inspiration, some real inspiration. Now, can and as I started to say a little bit ago, if you could share with the chick with beats and I, JPEGs, pictures, whatever you've got you know with the with the six protons and and the, you know your your music covers your photos and so forth you know we'll put it out everywhere because people need to people who we're you were bringing you know the this this discussion to them and they're saying i can hear them right now wow how do i learn more about this gentleman how do i meet this gentleman how do i link up with this gentleman how do i follow this gentleman on various platforms and so forth so share that information right now so they can take note of that before we go any further okay uh you can follow me on uh instagram at 106 letters all my social media is 106 letters h-u-n-t-e-r the number six l-e-t-t-e-r-z and uh that's spotify that's instagram that's facebook that's snapchat that's everything you know youtube you just typing in all my uh, music pops up and it comes up right away. And I would love all the support. I got all types of music from R&B to 
revolutionary hip hop to trap music to you know um what's the new the the Travis Scott they call it like pop rodeo rap music I got that too you know wherever you want to call it it's it's new school but yeah I got that too so yeah I appreciate all the support y'all can you know give okay now now and you mentioned the six protons mm -hmm. okay that's some strong info right okay and as far as the melanin is concerned and so can you quickly go through that one more time in case anybody missed that okay the six protons uh two is my mixtape and what it stands for is um our dna makeup is which is six protons six neutrons six electrons um i was reading a book and um it was telling me about how we are connected to the universe the universe has six protons six neutrons and six electrons as well and we are the only race that lives amongst the world that is in harmony with the universe see what i'm saying that's something that is very important that i feel we need to know as a people we also need to know that eating red meat or any type of meat deteriorates the melanation dna if you remember if you if you go back further when they used to teach us about slavery they stopped letting us eat the crop vegetables and started feeding us pig feet fat back all that type of stuff meat that we didn't eat we was never carnivores we was never meat eaters you can read all the books in the past we was never meat eaters we was always eating vegetables and we would eat fish but we was never eating cow we was never eating pig we was never eating that we would fish and eat off the land with plants so that's okay, why I, I, got a question. I, got a, I got a question for you right now mm -hmm. the info that you're sharing when you talked about insurance and education and so on and so forth is there a way that the folks can tap into you or your folks about how to learn more of that? Or can we send uh, them most, straight to you? Most definitely. They can hit me up on um, Instagram at 106 Letters. I can uh, show you the processes you need to uh, learn how to uh, not pay for insurance through here. By It's, it's all about wording. Uh, I see I see you papers, uh, I see, see you papers, um, documents, um, claiming your nationality, um, being a sovereign citizen, a private citizen, it's certain ways you can go about it that you can um, not no longer have to be so-called cattle within the system. You can run your own your own system, uh, you know, your own game or whatever. You can be a sovereign citizen, and you can look that up on online. Just go to Google, look up sovereign citizen, look up private citizen. It's things that you see other wealthy people doing. And you're like, dang, how do they just keep getting billions and trillions of dollars? Well, what they did was they gave up their citizenship and they said, hey, I want to claim my nationality. I want to turn in my Social Security card. I want to turn this in. I'm I'm no longer I'm no longer uh, living under this contract by you. I'm no longer such and such. Whatever my birth certificate is, I'm no longer that person. And I want my account that's on the back of my Social Security card in the red numbers. When you type that in on the Federal Reserve, you will see you have a bank that will pop up and everything that happened in your life from a car wreck, a ticket, uh, going to jail, breaking an ankle, it'll pop up and it'll show you how much money they've been making off you just living in America and how much money you have. When you become a private citizen, they have to give you that money off of your Social Security and then you have to rename yourself and then most time when you become provinces, they make you move out of America. But that's what happens. They give you a black card. You got all the trillions or billions that you got on your Social Security. And then you live. You rename yourself and you live. Why are you not telling people this? Wow. Well, it's Gadda Gaddafi tried to tell Got killed. <laughs> oh, I was just going to say, a chick with beast. I really can't. We're winding down on time. I'm going to let you mm -hmm. take over because I really can't tell just what time is left. Can you? Uh, yeah, it's a, it's about that time now. So I just want to say thanks for coming on and uh, yeah, just sharing all your knowledge and wisdom with us. Hey, hey thank you again. And everybody tap in 106 letters, six protons too right now on Spotify. If you want to hear some revolutionary trap music, uh, tap in 106 letters, revolutionary trap music and it'll pop up. I got a mixtape that'll blow your mind. I'm talking about all type of information. 
And if you just want to party and have a good time and listen to some good trap hip hop, listen to Six Protons too. And y'all rock on now. And I appreciate you guys for having me, man. Y'all guys are amazing, <laughs> amazing. Well, we, we we need some JPEGs of your of your album of your CD cover of your your download cover and things like that. So you know we can put it out there with the folks. And so, um, but yes, ladies and gentlemen, you know all around the globe, you know we've been sharing right now with the one and only Hunter Six Letters. He's a man of many means, and uh, he's got some some very profound and informative information to share with you, as well as some great music. Okay, and so yes. glad that you got a busy. He's got a busy schedule, so we're glad that he took time out of his schedule to join and chop it up with us. And mm -hmm. uh, yes. we're looking for the next edition. <laughs> you guys are amazing, man. I love you guys, man, for real. Right back at you. Man, that was really, really great to have him on. Um, you know, just always a, a good time, very positive individual, and yeah, it was just pleasant to have him on the show. Yes, yes, you know, and you have to listen between the lines because, you know, he's a very knowledgeable person, and, uh, you know, he's got a lot of ambition. Some of it's already in effect. <laughs> okay, <laughs> he's got even more in store coming down the road, so a great time with Hunter Six Letters. Yes. All right. We're going to take a quick pause for the cause and then we'll be right back with music industry news after this. Okay. with music industry news first off bmg has acquired the music interests of john lee hooker the legendary blues icon and uh so they currently represent or own the rights of many uh blues artists uh what willie dixon howlin wolf muddy waters lil walter i mean the list just goes on and on and on so now he's a part of that uh, repertoire that BMG has been representing. So new stuff happening there. Yeah, yeah. Um, we want to make sure that all of those, um, the families of those people, the gentlemen who blazed the trail, have access to that. Don't just 
get the library and run away with it. <laughs> <laughs> Share, make sure that those people who put in the hard work, they get a piece of that, you know, a big, the, the most of that. Okay. And so, uh, yeah, so we're happy to hear that. We just want to make sure that it trickles down to the hands of the folks of the family who, uh, or where that originated from. Mm-hmm. Yeah, an exact dollar amount wasn't spelled out, but yeah, hopefully they were well taken care of by that deal. Oh. Yes, yes, let's hope so. Let's hope so. Yes. All right, Snoop Dogg. I feel like he's been in our uh, news circles quite a bit for all these moves and stuff that he's continuously making. So, you know, we talked a little bit about Death Row, uh, you know, him taking ownership over that again and, uh, well, officially for the first time but now he's saying that it's going to be the first nft record label and so he said i want to be the first major in the metaverse um he also states that they'll be putting out artists through the metaverse just like how they broke the industry when they were the first independent label that became major um he wants to be the first major label in the metaverse so it'll be really really exciting to see everything that kind of ventures out of that yeah, it will. It will. And so, you know, shouts out to him for um, I saw an interview and uh, he was mentioning how he surrounded himself with some very capable people mm-hmm. to assist mm-hmm. him with a lot of these moves. OK, so that's something that we've been <laughs> we've been stressing here for quite a while. So um, make sure, you know, you reach out and, and, and uh, find somebody who's very well versed in different types of, of directions that you want to take your music career into so yeah big shout out shout outs to the one and only snoop yes D-O-W-G. yes for sure and uh one of those things that branched off from that is that um when his new album dropped uh, shortly after all that news i mean it was just one thing after the other you know that awesome super bowl performance and then we found out he was taking over death row records and then he decided to release an album which is still available on the streaming platforms, but he also uh, started releasing that as a part of his stash box NFTs. So just within the first five days, he sold over $44 million worth of his stash box NFTs. So, you know, at the time that was just, I mean, it's a phenomenal thing that happened anyway. It looks like there's still some that are available because I believe initially it was supposed to shut down on the 18th but it looks like it'll be running through March. But I mean, that's just phenomenal to be able to do that in the first five days, $44 million worth. And so the NFTs are supposed to be, you know, pretty special. Um, They'll come with at least one song from the new album, which is back on death row. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, he's just doing some, some big major stuff. Um, People who own the NFTs can also expect like different pop-ups, chances for exclusive um concerts and things like that so you know very enterprising concept i love how he's just taking it and run with it um you know a lot of times when something that we're not used to we can tend to kind of shy away from it Uh, but yeah he's just embracing this wholeheartedly and just diving in and it's incredible to watch yes yes and and take note you know make note snoop has he has put in the hard work Mm-hmm. Okay, don't think, you know, for the newbies out there, don't think that he just busted out the door and all this just happened when he snapped his finger. No, 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 no. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Snoop's been putting the hard work in for a long time, and now he's reaping his rewards uh, from, from that hard work. And um, so, you know, great things are happening. Um, so, and it can happen to all of you out there in the industry, but put your work in first. And, and uh, grab your toe hold, and uh, you can do it too. Very well said, expertly said, indeed. And um, okay, so now this, I'm kind of mentioning it as a side note to to what Snoop's been doing because for this particular artist, I feel like he gets enough press <laughs> to where I don't necessarily like to contribute to it, but it is music news. But for a certain someone who uh, recently changed his name and has been going through a very, very public feud trying to get his wife back, um, has also decided to release his own streaming player. So they're called STEM players. 
And apparently he generated over two million in sales um, in the first two days, according to him. So yeah, the, there are things happening. The whole point is that artists are looking for ways to get the music directly to the fans without um, all these middle steps in between. And so it'll be really interesting to see some of the other things that come forth um, this year. Because as we mentioned, you know, there's been people uh, predicting that, you know, the NFTs are going to be a major disruptor, hopefully in a good way to keep everybody happy. But with this other artist um, who shall remain unnamed by me, at least, <laughs> um, you know, when you do stuff like that and make things kind of scarce, I mean, granted, he's kind of taking the, the control back, getting rid of the middleman, but scarcity can often, and we've seen it happen repeatedly with uh, more piracy. So I don't know. It'll be kind of interesting to see how this plays out. Of course, he's got a really, really serious, diehard, hardcore fan base. So, yeah, I mean, you know, this could be the start of something new, potentially. But, you know, with him, I, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. <laughs> right, right. You know, so, uh, yeah, you know, kudos on the entrepreneurial side. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, you know, I, I can never uh, really uh, make any um, side eye comments for somebody who's um, taking some entrepreneurial steps uh, in a big way. Okay, so yeah, we got to sit back and watch and see what happens. You know, um, I'm not gonna um, just say I wish bad vibes or anything like that. That's not my style. Okay, and so hopefully that goes through. But it does uh, pinpoint that yeah, there are some people out there who are tired of the norm. And they're looking for other ways to do things and they're not mm -hmm. just settling for mm -hmm. they're not just settling for okay so you know hey for the folks out there who are not just settling for and they're um, um busting a trail blazing a trail trying to make some other things happen in other regards um you know we can go way back to the purple man okay you know there were some moves that he made way back you know that kind of set the stage for things like this and so uh you know, on the business tip, we'll sit back and, and absorb and see what happens. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, there's a lesson to be learned in some of these trends that you're seeing. But yeah, the main one and all these news stories that we're starting to see is that, you know, the artists want the control. They're tired of to having to get what trickles down to them from the middle. Oh, yeah. And so, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because um, they're the ones that put in the hard work. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So some artists are saying I put in all this hard work and I just get a little trickle down. Um, now, you know, there's got to be another way. And so you know, we should, we'll we see. <laughs> yes. Yeah, for sure. All right. And Encore. Now, we've mentioned um, Encore on here before. Uh, Too Short had his um, house party <laughs> or uh, yeah, at his virtual strip club or something like that on there. But now um it's a live performance platform and the encore studio app has officially launched uh following their private beta and so they got another influx of nine million in uh, funding so they're planning to put that to use so you know just in case you missed it before but they let artists create and perform in live custom augmented reality environments so basically they get to develop a stage throw show through their actual phones so fans can participate via microtransactions in the form of a 10 cent clap. So that can be used while you're watching the shows by, you know, paying for the claps and then you're sharing it with the artist. Claps are spit, I'm sorry, claps are split. Ooh, that was hard to say. 80-20 between Encore and the artist. So 80% goes to the artist and the 20% goes to uh, Encore. So it'll be interesting to see some of the other things that come forth. Um, you know, I heard really good things about the concerts that took place already there. So with this opening up to a, a broader audience, it's really exciting to see uh, what's going to come forth. Yes, yes. You know, so, so you know, shouts out to you for bringing that out to for the peeps to hear, you know, so that's good information, good education. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my pleasure. I mean, it's always good to know when there's tools out there to help independent artists be able to get their music to their fans. So yeah, this one has a lot of potential and um, yeah, I'm excited about it. <laughs> we can tell. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And um, 
you know, more news about that disruption. Uh, Steve Aoki, very, very popular celebrity DJ and producer, says that he's made more money with NFTs than from 10 years of music advances. So, yeah, I mean, that's that's a phenomenal amount. Um, yeah, but he said if he was to break it down in the 10 years that he had been making music, so six albums and all the advances he got from those, what he did in one NFT drop last year made him more money than all of that. So, yeah, it's something I know there's a lot of anytime you hear about something bubbling and popping the way that this is, you, you get all uh, types of perspectives about it. So there's a lot saying, OK, well, don't get caught up in the hype. You know, the bubble's about to burst and that sort of thing. But, you know, when things kind of transition over to to the next thing, you know, it'll be something that you want to make sure that you're really aware of before that actually happens. So, you know, with the, the car, people said that they were perfectly happy with a horse and buggy. But, you know, look what we see more often nowadays. So, yeah, not to say that you have to rush into it. Always take your time, do your research beforehand. But it looks like this is probably um, something that's going to stick around for quite a while. Words of wisdom spoken by a chick with beats. (laughs) All right. Uh, We're going to take another quick pause for the cause, and then we'll be back with more music industry news right after this. Okay. more music industry news spoke has launched a music therapy app specifically for gen z and they raised uh one and a half million dollars in their first round of funding so it's a new app that generates music with mindfulness benefits as they call it and so it combines music with uh different mindfulness prompts uh that start um, well basically target gen z or the under age 25 group who are often put off by mindlessness apps for uh, (laughs) those of us who may be older than that. So it's kind of interesting that they're doing something specifically for this market. And I think that it's really cool and especially to be able to blend music with mindfulness. 
Um, so that's something else to keep in mind. Um, we've been seeing this happen um, a little more frequently, I feel, where artists are taking the time to actually make uh, music kind of geared toward mindfulness. Um, we've had Fire Free on. She's taking the time to do stuff like that. Um, Rizzo from Wu-Tang recently had a mindfulness CD. So, you know, it looks like it's something that um, is definitely something to keep in mind if you like to chill and that sort of thing people are looking for ways to relax especially with you know all the stuff that's been going on over the last couple of years people need it so yeah i think this is a good thing and also something for artists to kind of keep in mind oh yeah oh yeah yeah so i mean there's there's a space for a lot of different things definitely a space for this mm -hmm. all right the music licensing company ppl has uh, reached a record $128 million in international collections last year. So, I mean, this is a great thing because that means that that money's not being left on the table and it's getting to the hands of the artists who deserve it. And uh, they attribute that uh, growth in collection because they worked really hard to improve, guess what, recording metadata in the identification of recording usage so that way it's able to find the stuff and make sure that um, all their members can actually receive the revenue that they've earned so you know we've mentioned before your metadata is super important to make sure that you have everything filled out correctly so that way you can get the credit that you deserve so yeah once again something to keep in mind <laughs> yeah there was a very very uh, important news story that came out a couple of days ago about metadata and um, <laughs> we'll talk about that in the coming days but metadata is very important mm -hmm. all right and uh, the crypto music app Audius has bridged together audio tokens from Ethereum. I, I never know how to say that I hope that's uh, Ethereum to uh, <laughs> Solana so Audius is a decentralized music streaming and sharing platform that's, you know, kind of a blend of services like Spotify and SoundCloud. And um, so they have token rewards for users and creators alike. So, so far, you know, there's been a lot of big names um, in rock and um, electronic music, like including uh, what Linkin Park, Weezer, Skrillex. I mean, tons of people who've um, already released songs through there. And it's attracted more than well, almost five and a half million unique users over just the last month, according to the site. So, you know, something to keep in mind, something to be aware of. It's the more platforms that are out there that you know about that actually have potential to bring that volume of users. You definitely want to make sure that uh, your music is there where you can actually reach more fans. So, yeah, something to check out. And uh, yeah, once again, that's the crypto music app called Audius. Hey, well, partake, you know, dig in, check it out, use it if that fits you. And, you know, here's another opportunity. Mm -hmm. All right. And Tool has enraged fans by selling signed vinyl for $810. So basically, it's been said that their fans are super committed, but even they're starting to say, hey, this is getting a bit ridiculous. This is kind of too steep. So... This is a band that went 13 years without releasing an album then came back with, with an 80 minute long album. And then all of a sudden the fans pushed that album to number one on the Billboard charts. So, you know, they're, they're diehard, they're there, but even they're saying, okay, yeah, this is getting too steep and too rich for my blood. And uh, this is after fans kind of stuck with them after they kept their music off of streaming services and um, like for multiple years. But um, yeah, so it, I feel like this is a bit of a cautionary tale. Granted, we're in an age now where people are actually starting to value um, the uniqueness of things. So, you know, being able to hold that vinyl in your hand is a heck of a lot different than just press and play, you know, on your phone or iPod or whatever you got. But um, yeah, there is a, a limit, I guess, to what fans are willing to do for the exclusive feeling. And uh, yeah, some of them say $810 for Assigned vinyl is uh, yeah, way too high. What do you think about that? <laughs> well, I'll leave that up to the prospective buyer. I, mean, I, I don't know. 
uh, we shall see is all I'm going to say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, in theory, certain things can be, you know, more special when there's not a lot of them out there. I mean, that's kind of the whole driving factor behind NFTs. But um, yeah, just something to kind of keep in mind. There's there's a range. Um, you got to figure out where your fans fall in that spectrum before you try something like that. So <laughs> yeah, word to the wise. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And there's a music group that is suing NBC and the US a U.S. figure skating pair over using their song during the Winter Olympics. So it's the young, the heavy young heathens. Uh, they say that they were never contacted by either one from the skating duo, um, Team USA, or the U.S. Figure Skating, or NBC, USA Network, and Peacock. All the places that aired it never contacted to see if it was okay to use it. And so it was broadcast everywhere. And of course, when your music is broadcasted, you should be paid. And so they're filing suit to make sure that that happens. Apparently, it's not the first time they've had to do that. Um, Their music was used for a theme song for a really popular show, and they had to sue back then, too. So, you know, hey, you got to make sure you get your money. I'm I'm not mad at them at all for this because they actually are due uh, royalties for that. Mm. Okay, well, hey, give them, give the people their money. <laughs> yep. <laughs> give them their cheese. After yep. the cheese, give them the cheese. Yep. If your music is broadcast, well, as of right now, not on terrestrial radio, but in all the other formats, you uh, you should be getting paid. So, yeah, no missteps there. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, that wraps up the music industry news for this week. We're going to take a quick pause for the cause, and then we'll be back to close out the night with you. All right. And that's a wrap for this week's edition of Music Marvels with the Chicka Beats and Breezy Gibson. We're glad that you tuned in and we really, really hope you do it again uh, next time. Yeah, yeah, it's been a real bad gas. And, um, you know, the news is the thing. So we've been saying, you <laughs> grab a notebook, write all this stuff down, review it, learn it, investigate, uh, research, and see if there's a fit for you, for, you know, with some of these different news breaks, news stories that are happening. So, yeah, good to be here. Glad to be part of this. And uh, hey, let's step up. 
Yes, for sure. All right, so you know where to find us. Till next time, tune in, tell a friend, and we'll see you then. Peace. Peace.